So a few months back, I built a fully 3D printed plane. It was 100% 3D printed. Uh, there was no reinforcing spar or uh, like a film outer coat layer uh, to save weight. Uh, it was 100% 3D printed PLA. And uh, as a proof of concept, it was a pretty good project. It was pretty good fun. Uh, but to be honest, I haven't really flown it since because it didn't fly amazing. You know, it was, it was quite heavy for what it was and therefore needed a small battery uh, to stay in the air, which then obviously reduced the flight time. You may have also seen my remote control vertical takeoff aircraft video. And although that flies great, it's also quite heavy, so the flight time isn't very long, and also it doesn't glide very well. The aerofoil for the wing on my vertical takeoff aircraft was created using a sheet of foam wrapped around an aluminium spar. Now although this technique did create an aerofoil shape, it wasn't consistent along the span of the wing. So at the at one end of the wing, it was a slightly different aerofoil to the other due to just the way that I'd glued it and uh, it wasn't quite straight when I glued it. Now in actual aircraft they have uh, ribs uh, running parallel to the fuselage inside of the wing obviously to keep the shape of the aerofoil and I was wondering whether I can adopt my 3D printed plane technique with the wing that I use on my VTOL uh, to create kind of a combination of the two and create a really good wing. Now as you saw from the intro of this video I've just made a prototype wing uh, wing section, which is 20 centimeters long and 15 centimeters in cord length, uh, and this is actually the same size as each wing section in my 3D printed plane, the first one that I created. Now, if I remember correctly, the the weight of the fully 3D printed wing section was about 55 to 60 grams. I'll, I'll put the actual weight here, and um, I think if I grab the scales, this is. So this is 19 grams, so that's, well, it's almost a, it's about a third of the weight of the fully 3D printed wing. Uh, so I think this wing could turn out quite well. Now this wing only has uh, two ribs in it, uh, spaced obviously 20 centimetres apart, but what I'll probably do is uh, space them 10 centimetres apart, because I think the airfoil slightly changes uh, in the middle section here, it, the foam sags a bit. So uh, I'd, I'd put more of them, uh, probably th print them thinner so they're lighter weight and uh, yeah, then get building with the wing and build a plane I guess. Q time lapse mode.
So this is a completed wing. As you can see, it looks quite bumpy along the span of the wing. Uh, however, the lighting and camera angle really exaggerate this. It doesn't look anywhere near this bad uh, when you actually hold the aircraft. The reason for these bumps is due to only having 10 ribs along a 1 meter wingspan. This means that there's about 10 centimeters gap between each rib and the foam uh, sags a bit in between each rib. Now this could be fixed by adding more ribs or maybe even 3D printing uh, some kind of shape that would go across the whole span just to keep the leading edge uh, you know, from sagging a bit. But to be honest, when you look at the plane in reality it actually looks quite decent. So to give you an example of how well these ribs work, this is the wing on my vertical takeoff aircraft which just has an aluminium spar, it has no ribs to keep the aerofoil shape. Now if you look at the leading edge it looks pretty much triangular um, there's no curvature to the uh, top side of the leading edge. You can also see that I flew it a few days ago, uh, but before then I probably didn't fly it for a month or two. And uh, so the dust collection on the rear side of the wing is still there, but on the leading edge it has been removed by the airflow. So it pretty much flies in a stall, I guess. Uh, the airflow must just flow up the, the leading uh, top edge and just become turbulent over the, the dust section. Uh, which, yeah, hasn't cleared the dust off. And also a quick note, I just want to mention the weight difference between this and my fully 3D printed plane. Uh, the weight of the new plane is 312 grams, and the weight of the old 3D printed plane was 468 grams. And they both have the same wing dimensions. So, uh, yeah, using foam definitely saves a lot of weight. Okay, this is the first test flight. Everything's going the right way. Just gonna increase the throttle and just throw it. See if you can zoom in all the way, that's alright. Flies really nice and slow being so light. I think it's about 525 grams total weight. Okay, I'm going to fly it just over to the other side of the field. And come in for a, a nice slow pass. Stick manual focus. Ah, oh, so just. Sorry, I must have just done the wrong one. It's alright. Okay, I'm going to go on the other side of the field now and just come and just do a nice slow sweep past us. Mm -hmm. It's better. Yeah? Yeah, much better. Okay, I'll do a fast path now. Uh-huh. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming for a glide past us. I'm going to put the power on now. Is that hard to follow? No. Can I do some aerobatics? Let's try to. Oh, 
flies really well. Yeah. Right, you're there. Hello. Whee! And another loop. Flies really nice. All right, I'm gonna do a pass. Straight up in the air. All right, I'll bring it in for a landing now. noise. <laughs> Flies pretty nice actually. I think it's time to stick a camera on it and do some FPV flying with it. I'd like to thank you for watching this video and uh, please leave a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel please subscribe. Goodbye.